Hey, Flats Class YouTube, it's Captain CA. I'm just getting home from a trip, you can see the rods in there, uh, from Sodium Fishing here in Crystal River. Uh, picking up a bunch of tarpon supplies, everything from hooks to lures, and had a couple of my Shimano Saragossas spooled up, and it kind of kicked off a thought that I should do a series of tarpon tips or how-tos for you guys here on Flat Scus YouTube. So this will be part one of a five-part series that we're going to do between now and the end of the month. So we're talking mid-month right now. So by the time we get to Memorial Day, you should know a whole lot about tarpon fishing. Today, I'm going to talk with you a little bit about a favorite rod and reel combo that I like to use for both flats fishing for tarpon and beach tarpon. So it's going to be some shallow stuff. It's not going to be the heavy duty stuff. It's going to be some lighter weight stuff. So I'm going to come out here to the boat. I'm going to lay everything out for you guys. While I'm doing that, may as well get you all pumped up and show you some tarpon footage. Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. See how long it takes you. Oh, there you are. Make sure you bow, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you survived that one. <laughs> yep. Remember, Carol. Stick your hands out there. Huh? You're doing fine. Love having that kind of footage on file for you guys to get you pumped up here for tarpon season. And like I said earlier, this is just part one of a five-part series. All right, the first rod and reel combo that we're going to really tackle is the one that you're going to need for beach fishing and for shallow flats fishing. If you're in one of those scenarios like I typically find myself up here on the nature coast where you're fishing a lot of water that it is anywhere from four to sometimes eight or nine feet deep rarely deeper than 10 feet unless I have to run offshore. But, uh, and those that love to fish the beaches where you have strings of migrating fish coming down and you need a rod and reel combo that will allow you to launch a lighter lure far enough ahead of them and it be a very smooth, easy process, but still have added adequate, still have adequate strength and power to land the fish. They can't sound when you're fishing for them in less than 10 feet of water. So they're going to jump a lot. And it's nice to have a forgiving rod set up like the one I'm about to show you. Let's talk about the rod first. This is a Shimano Terramar Double X. There it is right there. And there's your specs right there. You guys can see them. All right, it's a 15 to 30 pound rod line weight wise. So that's going to give you a good idea what you're going to be able to throw on this, this particular setup. It'll handle lures anywhere from a half to an ounce and a half, and it'll do them all really well. A lot of the rods I talk about, they'll give you that lower weight range, but there's a sweet spot that you got to pick in the middle. This one, not so much. You can throw it as light as a half, where I have this set up right here, or you can throw as heavy as a, as a big, like, hoagie or magnum swims from Z-Man or a big plug from Mirror Lure. There's a lot of bigger lures that you can throw on this rod very smoothly, and it's not gonna waffle that rod and, and hurt your cast. So it's, it's a great setup. Because it's a Terramar Double X, it has both High Power X and Spiral X. That is the cross carbon wrapping of carbon tape around this rod. So it gives it a lot more stiffness than you would think for a medium heavy. This thing does not bend easy. It finds itself. That's why it's an extra fast action. That's why I like it. I typically find a lot of the Terramar rod actions 
are usually a power heavier than is noted on the blank itself. So it makes it a good lightweight tarpon rod. Now, let's talk a little bit about this reel. You're gonna notice, you're like, wow, that reel looks small. It is a Saragossa, Shimano Saragossa 6000. And this is a solid reel. It really is and does a good job. It holds, I'm gonna say, close to 300 yards of 30 pound Power Pro Super Slick. And it's, it's virtually an unchanged reel over the last, I don't know, almost a decade they've been making these things now. Uh, it's got that same Cold Forge Hagani frame and interior gear, so there's very little um, flexibility with this. It's, it's rigid, and when you have a rigid reel like that set up in a good uh, reel seat, you're not wasting energy. It's super smooth. I mean, it's a very smooth set up here. I love the textured power knob on this because when you're fighting, fighting big fish, you're sweating. It's summertime and your hands are wet and it's nice to be able to reach for that knob and be able to make some big turns on a fish. It's got 22 pounds of drag, which is incredible for a 6,000 size reel. It's got tons, I mean tons of reel seat, uh, reel drag. It's got tons of drag adjustment on here. So the drag is fantastic. Uh, it allows me to make adjustments within the fight and then I don't have to really worry about it. The reel itself weighs about 16 ounces and it also possesses a feature called infinity drive where it, the pinion gear is supported just like it is in the, in, the, uh, in the Stella series and I think it's in the twin power now too. So you're talking about no flex, not even in the spool. So this is a solid big fish fighting reel, even though it's only in the 6,000 size. It's got cro cross carbon drag on this one and it has X protect, which it kind of protects the whole reel from salt water. It's sealed drag and the reel itself holds up very well. I've got several of these outfits that are sitting in the shop in there that are like five years old, six years old. And remember, I'm on the water every day during tarpon season. So, I mean, we put a lot of heat on these. Now, this particular one I use also for big snook fishing and some shallow water grouper around here. But this is pretty amazing setup between the rod and the reel. Now, go check out some more footage. And I'm going to be back to talk a little bit about line, leader weight, and what knots you're going to need to accomplish the mission. nice to have that kind of footage in the can to show you what the possibilities are catching shallow water tarpon. All right, to, to back up a little bit, this whole combo with the Shimano Saragossa and the Terramar XX, you're probably looking at about 600 bucks. That's what you're looking at. But it's a great sight fishing tool and there's not a whole lot you can chintz on if you want to have a rod that's this light powerful enough to subdue tarpon you know, 130 pounds and under. Once you start getting bigger than that, then it gets to be a lot bigger challenge. Uh, now I spool this, this setup with 30 pound. This is the Marine Blue Power Pro Super Slick. I can get about 300 yards on there. And then I connect it. Let me grab my leader material here. I got a Band-Aid on my finger because I hurt, hurt myself like I typically do. I doubled the line. So I've got a bimini twist. I don't know if you can, you can probably make that out. Got a, a little bimini knot here and doubles the line. And then I've got an all bright or, or maybe it's a no name knot that I tied right here. And I actually put a spot of glue on that. So I've got a very strong beginning butt section to my, to my total leader system. Then I actually put, believe it or not, I've got four foot, I'm gonna keep going down, four foot of 40 pound leader. 
and I connect that to a piece of 50 or 60 fluorocarbon to the actual bait itself because I want to have a foot of the heavy bite tippet here and that's going to be 50 or 60 just depends on how clear the water is. The upper leg of this leader system, the long, which I'm still going right there, that is 40. And I like to have a thick piece there too because these, these fish will be tail whacking that, that leader system. So I want it strong. This knot here that I put the bite tippet to the other, the lighter part of the leader, that is a blood knot. That is a very strong knot, easy knot to tie. It, not at first, but if you practice it a few times, you'll be pretty good. And for putting line diameters like this together, that blood knot does a good job. So I've got the blood knot there. And then here I've got like a perfection loop knot, if you will, um, to the actual bait itself. Now we're going to do one of the parts of this series, because this is only part one, is going to be on lures. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've done here. With that perfection loop on here, it gives this bait a lot of... of a twist and turn. This is a chin locks hook. It's a pretty heavy duty one. It's a six odd. So uh, it makes this little jerk shot ride pretty good. But what I do is I take a pair of pliers here and I open this hook up just a little bit. This hook point usually is pointed right at that line tie. But if you look real close, you can see how I've bent it up just a bit. So I have a more positive hook set to the button of the tarpon. And uh, once, you know, those that aren't familiar with Z-Man, once you put a Z-Man bait on one of these, these things, it is not coming off. Uh, you can see that upwards bend in the hook there where I've taken it out of line to make sure. And it's a heavy gauge hook. And on this setup with the drag set just right, this is 30 pounds, so I'm probably gonna set my drag at about seven pounds or so for this setup for the initial hookup, um, about 25% of the actual line strength. That way when I whack them, it's gonna drive right through. And lots of times I'll even take that little barb there and shave a little bit more off because this one comes up quite a bit. So I'll probably take my hook file and knock that down just a little bit. And I can stay connected to those tarpon with this setup. Now, this is one of my favorite lures here because it looks just like a shrimp when I'm, I make that long cast in front of the, the daisy chain or I'm bringing it into a string and I just barely reel it and that thing will just track just perfectly and look kind of like a shrimp going, going through there. And one of them will come up and eat that thing and I'll reel tight as I can. I mean tight till the rod loads and then I'll whack them one time and then get ready for the jump. I'll lean into them, get ready for the jump. This little setup here, I'm telling you guys, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it for sight fishing these fish, seeing rolling fish, broadcasting this. You can make casts up to 150 feet with this setup here. It does a really solid job depending on the weight of the lure. All right, take a look at this fish right here and I'll be back in a minute. I wanna close this thing out up by the shop. So, you're probably wondering, why do I have this, uh, my rod and reel set up here in the tailgate of my truck? Well, here's why. I'm setting the drag on my reel. Remember when I told you that I like to have it close to seven pounds on this particular outfit? It's a 15 to 30 pound rod. And I like being close to 20, 25%. Um, of what the line test is and the, the highest part of the rod rating because I want to put enough bend in it so I get good hook penetration. So what I've done is I've taken my boga and I let that rod load as much as it can to its max. And then I look right here and it's got about six pounds on it, maybe six and a half pounds, just like that. But it's loaded. You can't do it if it's in line. It's got to be loaded. So make sure it's loaded. Load the rod and make sure it's smooth and the tip's not jumping or the, or the actual drag doesn't jump. Because if you do it that way, you'll have the proper drag setting. So I always like to load the rod, set the drag 20, sometimes 25%, depending on how you're fishing. Um, but in most cases, these fish can really load the rod up. So I've got about six, six and a half pounds according to my boga grip, and that's probably close enough for 30 pound, and it gives me that nice bend. Now, if I were to 
like I said, if I were to take the rod and set it straight and pull straight out, I'd have to set it a whole lot tighter than I just did because it doesn't have the same effect on a bent rod as it does straight out the drag. So I'll pull on this. That's enough to get good hook penetration, you know, and survive that initial run of the actual tarpon. <laughs> if it's too tight, you'll doggone for sure break them off. All right, getting back to it. Hopefully you enjoyed part one of our five part. Hopefully you enjoyed part one of our five part series on tarpon. Uh, this lightweight setup that I like to use for both beach and flats tarpon, I think you're gonna, you're gonna really like it. It's light enough where you can throw at fish all day long and you can catch some adult sized tarpon with this setup. So don't sleep on it. All right, now, if you like what you're seeing here at Flats Class YouTube, give me the thumbs up and subscribe. I'm here to make you, well, a better tarpon angler this time. All right, until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson signing off. I gotta get to the rest of the rods I picked up from sodium and get them taken care of.